Hello everyone, Wylock here. If you have a lot of miniatures, you probably store them in like a tackle box or, or even a professionally made, like something that's intended for miniatures, foam inserts, that sort of thing. What I do is take good, healthy cardboard boxes and retrofit them. I make custom trays for them. So uh, you can fit a lot more miniatures in by building it custom for your collection. I'll show you what I mean. So the, the steps are pretty simple. We'll go through those quickly. Then I'm gonna show you all the ones that I've made to store my armies. So first you need a box. Any box will do that you think is big enough to hold your army or miniature collection. The idea here is that we're going to make custom insert trays for your box. So measure it. Don't measure it at the middle, measure it at the ends. The middle can flex and bend, but the ends don't. Now I'm using foam board here, but I've also used corrugated cardboard. That works great too. So we'll cut a rectangle from those two measurements you just took, but do it a little bit smaller in both directions. Leave it like an eighth inch short, or if you're using the metric system, like two millimeters short in both directions. Now we need to pause and think for a moment. For this example, I know I'm gonna use this tray for all my tactical marines, so I'm gonna measure the width and height of the model. Notice that some features hang over the edge of the base, right? But we just store them sideways, so you don't need to account for that. Most of the time, you can just use the size of the base, plus add an extra like two millimeters just to make sure it'll fit. But wait, I'm also gonna have some of these assault marines in the tray, and this guy's a little taller. So you need to functionally group your miniatures together and then find the limiting measurements from that group. Who's the biggest? And that's the guy to which we will design our channels. So after looking at my collection and taking some measurements, I've settled on a 40 millimeter height for this tray. So I'll cut some strips. Again, corrugated cardboard works great too. Now we could attach our first two strips like this to form the first channel, right? But no, we don't need the one on the outside because that's where the wall of the box itself is going to be. That'll keep the model in place so we don't need to waste those precious few millimeters. So on the base of the tray, I'll measure 30 millimeters in from one side and draw a line. Again, this 30 millimeters is based on the measurements of my models. Hot glue. Lay down a healthy bead of hot glue on the outside of the line and attach that first strip, taking care to keep it straight. Use the line you drew to help with that. Then I measured 30 millimeters onward from the strip we just attached, and again draw a line and hot glue, and put on another divider. Another 30 millimeters, another line, another divider, and so on until you run out of room on that tray. So we can insert the tray in the box, and you see this guy fits nicely. And the idea is that your next tray will sit on top, supported by those dividers. And we're about to go to the table to see the final product, but real quick, some reminders. If you like what you're about to see, please don't hesitate to hit that like button, subscribe, reminders, etc., etc. There is a link in the description below for my Amazon storefront. Easy, free way to support the channel if you want. Just buy your stuff through that link. And for all you 3D printers out there, Wylox Crafting Vids is sponsored by Heroes Horde, which has an excellent range of high quality models, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines, which are open lot compatible. Also, check out my modules over on the DMs Guild, and remember, $3 patrons get free copies of all my releases. Now I'm going to show you several boxes that I've retrofitted to store my various armies, and you'll see how you can get really creative with it, and the optimization is actually a pretty fun puzzle in and of itself. Here is my Ultramarine army. This is a three-layer box. The top layer here has my HQ. Uh, it's got some assault terminators who are taller than most infantry, the sergeants for it, uh, terminators over on the left. You saw I took out a couple dividers before they're not attached yet, so I'm not quite set on exactly how I'm going to divide this layer up, but it's very close to done. In the middle, we have all the TAC Marines, and they're divided and sorted by weapons. Uh, there's, the, there's a sergeant. Those are over on the right. Plasma, Melta. So having so many rows allows me to keep them organized and sorted depending what kind of unit I want to put together for the night. We'll take this out and look on the bottom and what do we have there? We have vehicles. Four tanks and I've made the nacelles big enough so that their uh, attachments like the sponsons and the turrets can fit. 
Over in the corner, you'll see I actually have two dreadnoughts per compartment. This is future proofing in case I get rid of the dreadnoughts, uh, want to put tanks in their place. And in general, they're big enough that they stick together and they keep each other from moving around. So I just toss them in there with all their weapons and they stay put. We'll put this whole thing back together, very easy. Just slide it on in there and then the top layer on top. So that's my roughly 2000 point brigade of ultramarines. Next up, we're going to look at my Necrons. Now, this is my main army, and this is a much bigger box as a result. It's also not done yet. It's just enough to keep everything sort of somewhat organized, but I'm going to finish it in the near future here. Anyway, on the left, I have a no trays, so it's a big, tall area to accommodate a monolith, larger models. Here's a Canoptic Spider, and there's a bunch of stuff down in here I really got to get organized. These are objective markers. I'll put a card on the screen if you missed that episode. Anyway, we'll toss him back in there, and over here is the infantry, the warriors, immortals, death marks, lich guard, there's also some scarabs, so that's what this layer is for, and this is out of foam core. You can see I interchangeably use foam core or corrugated cardboard, whatever's available to me at the moment, doesn't really matter to me. Down here, some destroyers, and obviously there's, you could put more dividers in here. You could even put more layers in these sub-compartments. Here's all my HQs tossed into one bin. I, I will probably make little dividers for each of them because they're special and they can each get their own compartment. So this one's not done yet. I'll finish that up soon. Last one we're gonna look at are my Tyranids. I had to get a bit creative on this one. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but first let's look at the top layer. Over on the left are the rows of Hormigaunts. I did these with a, a bit of a gloss varnish, sort of satin gloss varnish, so I'm not worried about them colliding and chipping. There's the infestation nodes for the Gene Stealers, and here they are themselves, all barrel of monkeys tied together, as they tend to do. Uh, so, and then over there is the unit of Termagants that I have yet to finish. So let's go ahead and take out the top tray put it aside, see what's underneath. So this also is not done yet. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but uh, you can see over on the left, I put a big divider wall here to make that open area on the left. This is for all the monsters. So you got your uh, Tyran effects. Yep, the big one. And then the, uh, the Trigons. So over in the middle, I got my objective markers and I've just tossed some uh, gargoyles, which I've never used. I just bought them for the fun of painting them, but that's where they stay for now. Uh, I need two hands to get this tray out, so I'm gonna put the camera down a sec. And here we go, we'll see what's on the very bottom. And without any insert at the bottom, just glued directly to the box itself on the inside, made compartments for my flyrant. There's a broodlord, nine warriors, and then uh, six venom thropes. That double corrugated cardboard, I like to use that when I have it handy. It's stronger, it soaks in the glue better because it's got all those holes. It's got a lot of surface area to cling to. Anyway, we'll put these back together. This is how I store my armies, making custom boxes out of leftover materials. You can fit a lot more in a space by not having an individual cell for every model. You can stack them up in rows like this. So hopefully you find this approach nifty and helpful, and uh, thanks for watching. If you liked this particular project, here's two more that you should go check out right now. Also, enjoy this month's community showcase. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell reminder icon. I am Wylock, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.